Hi, Joe Kluter. Welcome back to Take Two. Welcome to my race shop. The first video came out great, but the rain was so loud on the roof you couldn't hear me. So I got a little bit of a break in the rain. So I'm going to take a shot at it once again. So haven't been around for a couple of weeks. Terry and I went on our first and maybe our last cruise <laughs> uh, a week ago. Came home to find out that 55 was selected by NASCAR to be at the throwback weekend at Darlington. So that was exciting. But So I'm back. And I'm back with part three of my story, right? So when I last left you, I had picked up that 74 Cuda, the yellow one, in New York, in the Bronx. Got it home. Well, my very good friend, Jimmy Kolofsky, who owns Auburn Auto Body, We've been friends since grammar school, I think. And he's the one that's always done my cars, all my restoration, all the paint work, body work. So he comes out to the house to check out the car. And he's looking at the car. And he, oh, it's a nice car, Joe, great car. But we got to paint it. He said, the paint wasn't primed right. Look, it comes right off. He took a razor blade. I'm like, okay, the paint's coming right off. And one of the things Jim liked to do is he always saved one thing for me to do because he knew I hated body work. And I soon found out what that was on this project. He said, I just want you to take a razor blade, scrape all the paint off the car, and then when that's done, we'll do the body work. Okay, take a razor blade, and it's gonna take all the paint off. Yeah, it's easy, watch, look, look. And he takes a strip right down the car, it comes off. Okay, <clears throat> guess that's what I'm gonna do. So, they looked at me and he gave me some advice. That's some of the best advice some people have ever given me when it comes to buying cars. He goes, you gotta stop this. You gotta stop this madness. He said, you need to look at buying cars, 30 cents on the dollar, 50 cents on the dollar. Cars that are done, they're complete. You don't have to touch them. Cars that, you buy them today, you're at a car show tomorrow winning trophies. He said, you need to go fishing. I'm like, what do you mean fishing? He goes, well, find a car for sale that you like when it's all done and offer them what you have. If you get 5,000, offer them 5,000. They want 15, offer them five. You get some nibbles. You get some people telling you to go for a ride. You may get a few bites. And then you may land a big one. And when you do, you make your money when you buy it, not when you sell it. So I thought about it. I said, okay. And then he went on his way and I went on my way. Well, a couple weeks later, this is about what I had done on the car. And I was done scraping paint. So, so you know what? When upstairs, I put the car on eBay. Guy in Texas buys it, shows up, drives all the way up from Texas to Massachusetts with a pickup truck and an open trailer. By this time, I had had the hood off, the nose off, the fenders off, the engine out, the tranny out, the seats out. I said, well, how are you going to pack this? He goes, I don't know. So we put the nose back on the car. We packed everything else inside the car. We took the engine with my engine hoist put it in the back of his pickup truck in an old tire, stuffed everything else into the back of the pickup truck, and on he way, on the way, he went to Texas. Never saw him again, and hopefully he restored the car. So now I had some money. So I looked at the one advertiser, and I see this 1970 Cuda, black on black, two-stage nitrous, just been restored. Beautiful car. He wanted about $25,000 for it. So I gave him a call. Got him on the phone. We're talking about it. It's a beautiful car. I know it's worth more than $25,000. Um, he goes, yeah. He goes, I got $25,000 just in parts. I'm not counting labor. I said, oh, I have 10. And that's all I had was 10. And he goes, he started laughing. He goes, I can't sell it for 10. I've got 25 in parts. 
Like, I know, I know, and it's worth more than 25, but all I have is 10. If something happens and you decide to sell it, I have 10. So kind of laughed and hung up the phone. This is a picture of that 70 Cuda in my backyard. A couple weeks later, he calls me. You still have that 10 grand? I said, yeah. Can you have it here tomorrow in cash? And I went, yeah. He goes, then be here tomorrow. Well, next day, Terry and I drive up there and he backs the cooter out. And I'm like, oh boy, what a beautiful car. Gets out of the car, so let's jack it up. I don't look underneath, all restored. I mean, this was one of the nicest cars I've ever owned in my life. And we did the paperwork, signed a title over, gave him the cash, and we're on our way. But I had a question for him. I said, why didn't you just sell this to me for 10 grand? He goes, well, he went, I had some troubles and I need some cash. And I sold a lot of the stuff that I had, but I came up short and my deadline was here. He goes, I was short $10,000. He goes, I really appreciate you being here today and taking the car off my hands for that money. So I guess I was doing him a favor, but I ended up with a really sweet ride. In fact, when Terry and I were on our way home, she called me on my cell phone and she said, I can't believe we just bought that car for 10 grand. <laughs> said, yeah, we did. It's a great car. And I did exactly what Jimmy said. By the way, if you're from Auburn, Get out to see Jimmy at Auburn Auto Body and Piner Stab and tell him Joe said hi. And uh, I was at a car show the next day. I drove that car for two years, never put a dime into it. And then a collector called me and said he really wanted it for his collection. And we made a deal and I, I did okay on that, that sale. And uh, so, you know what? Maybe you should try fishing sometime. You may get a couple of nibbles, you may get a couple of bites, but then you may land the big one. And you know, I've done many transactions like that since then, but the one thing I won't do, and I'm totally honest, if I have 20 grand, I'm not going to call somebody and tell them I only have 10. I won't do that. So I hope you enjoyed the third part of the series and till the next time. Follow your dreams, and God bless America. And there's no rain!